Good evening, Oswego, and welcome to WTOP 10, Monday Night News, your connection to Oswego and beyond. I'm Steve Fry. And I'm Alexandra Levy. Today is February 14th, and this is your news, sports, and weather all before the first commercial break. Let's take a look at your top stories. 10 News starts now. President Obama may be calling for spending cuts in 2012, but House Republicans want to slash spending now. On Tuesday, they'll be debating a new funding bill that calls for trimming $100 billion from the 2011 budget. And GOP lawmakers say they know some of the proposed cuts will be unpopular. House lawmakers are expected to vote their opinions on the bill's amendments as they're read aloud this week. Legislators hope to end the debate on the bill by the end of the week. In Massachusetts, a two-year-old boy and his mother have been found dead inside a trash bin, leaving authorities Monday to track down whoever killed the two and put them there. 25-year-old Maria Palaguchi and her toddler son Brian were dead in the large metal bin Sunday night in the city of Brockton, about 25 miles south of Boston. The investigation began Sunday around 9.30 p.m., where Brockton police got an anonymous phone call about the body inside the bin behind the building where Maria lived. While no one is yet in custody, the district attorney described the investiga investigation as very active. And now we'll catch our current conditions outside with meteorologist Christina Ferrone. Christina, what's it look like out there? Good evening, Oswego, and happy Valentine's Day. I'm standing outside the campus center, and it is 28 degrees out right now. Winds are northwest at 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30, probably more on campus. Just make sure you're careful if you're walking around on campus. There's a lot of black ice out here, and all that rain we had earlier today is now turning to ice everywhere. So be careful, and as we head into uh, tonight, the temperatures are going down into the single digits, going to be very cold, so stay warm inside with loved ones. And as we head into the rest of the week, it's going to be getting warmer, but tomorrow the sun will be out around 19 degrees, but we'll be getting into the 40s as we head into the rest of next week, or the rest of these, this week. Back to the desk. In the aftermath of the Egyptian rebellion, Iranian protesters marched into Tehran's Azidi Square, chanting death to the dictator. Specific information on Monday's protests in Iran is hard to come by. Media coverage is heavily restricted, and the internet's been slow to a crawl. But we're getting a clear sense that the movement against hardline regimes in the Middle East is far from over. Brian Todd reports. In Tehran, a battle between anti-government protesters and those who back the Islamic regime. Witnesses tell CNN crowds swelled into the tens of thousands Monday, and when some protesters chanted death to the dictator, they were attacked by Iranian security forces. Could this be a resurgence of the green movement that occurred after the 2009 elections in Iran? Trita Parsi thinks so. Members of his National Iranian American Council are reaching out to the dissidents through encrypted communications, and he senses new momentum. Are they telling your people that this is directly a result of Egypt? They're saying that this was an opportunity. Everyone knew that the struggle for democracy had not died and had not been defeated, but it was waiting for a new opportunity, for a new inspiration, for something that could give them a little bit more moral boost that there is a chance. And that came because of the very quick victories in Tunisia and Egypt. The Iranian regime cheered on those protests, President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad telling Egyptians, it is your right to decide your government and it is your right to freely express yourself. Now, his government's own crackdown draws accusations from Washington of hypocrisy. A regime which, over the last three weeks, has constantly hailed what went on in Egypt. And now, when given the opportunity to afford their people the same rights as they called for on behalf of the Egyptian people, once again, illustrate their true nature. Experts say the rekindling of the pro-democracy torch in Tehran is invigorating but they predict much more brutality against the demonstrators there. You see a clear difference between the way the Egyptian forces reacted to this and the way the Iranian Revolutionary Guard is reacting. Well, the biggest difference between what happened in Egypt and what happened in Iran is that in Egypt, the army were made up primarily of conscripts, meaning they were the same as the people protesting. In Iran, however, the security forces, the Revolutionary Guard, they're an elite unit, they're not conscripted, they're all volunteer, and they're sworn to defend the revolution.
An international six-man crew is making the halfway point of a mock mission to Mars. It's taking place right outside of Moscow, and it's part of an isolation experiment lasting more than 500 days. As Matthew Chance explains, the goal is to test the mental and physical strains that go along with traveling deep into space. Sometimes it doesn't pay to be the hero. Just ask four former Walmart employees north of Salt Lake City area. Andrew Adams reports they're looking for jobs after ripping a gun away from alleged shoplifter. The former employees are considering their legal options. And now we'll see what's going on with sports. This is Taylor Buglis. Thank you, Alexandra. Good evening, Oswego. I'm Taylor Buglis, and this is your Monday Night Sports Report. The top college football prospect, defenseman Devian Clowney, announced today he will attend the University of South Carolina in the fall. Clowney chose the Gamecocks over the University of Alabama and Clemson. When asked why he chose South Carolina, Clowney said, quote, I chose them because it's close to home. I chose them because I have friends there and my mom could come to see me all the time, end quote. And coming up later in sports, Tiger Woods is in trouble with the European Tour as a trade in the NHL, and two Lakers were honored by the ECAC West today. That's it for now. Back to Steve for your local news. Only eight classes met on SUNY Oswego's main campus this winter and its Syracuse-based Metro Campus Center in January. But according to the Palladium Times, the college's winter session enrollment was up 21% over last year. The explanation was the 28 online classes offered through SUNY Oswego's web-based programs. According to OswegoCountyToday.com, there are more homeless students in Fulton City School District than one might think. A majority of the students are homeless, attend the elementary school, but in total there are 75 students across the grades. Under the definition, a student living with his or her family in a motel, campground, awaiting foster home placement, or living with another family is all considered to be homeless. The district has won a state grant which will be going towards runaway and homeless students through Oswego County Opportunities. Over a thousand Oswego residents came out to the 6th annual Oswego Snow Festival to support the communities last week in hopes of raising money to renovate the aging Oswego Armory. Local businesses came out in support of the community as well with lots of food and activities including an antique railroad museum exhibit and a 2K run. The Oswego Humane Shelter was there also with pets for adoptions. Organizers say the event was a success and they can't wait for next year. Hello once again and tonight is going to be 7 degrees getting very cold and windy and as we head into our future cast it's going to be looking nice so get ready for the temperatures to warm up is spring on its way stay tuned Afternoon delight, but my sister shows I gotta make it sparks ignite, and the thorn will be new. So excited, rockets in flight, boo! Afternoon delight. I think you got it. Cam's Pizzeria, located at 31 West Bridge Street, serving New York style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine in, take out, or order delivery by calling 315-342-4255. Hey guys, it's Q again here for the second season of our Swiggle soundtrack. Make sure you guys tune in with Eric and Connor. Jams out for you guys at 9.30 every Tuesday, all right? Make sure you're here Tuesday, 9.30. Don't be late. Let's turn over this log. Yeah. Whoa! I like the brown wiggly one. Mmm, I like the green crunchy ones myself. Whoa. Go to discovertheforest.org. The Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911.
Oswego students, mark your calendar. The Student Association has set April 9th as the date for the 2011 Spring Concert. After months of anticipation and speculation on who will be performing, the lineup has officially been announced. Popular hip-hop artists J. Cole and Sam Adams will be headlining the event in the Campus Center Arena. Both artists have been on campus tours around the country and are sure to make a splash when they land in Oswego on April 9th. According to OswegoCountyToday.com, a 10-year-old Oswego girl is nearing her goal to help fight against childhood cancer. Emily Bradshaw is having her fundraiser sponsored by St. Baldrick's Church on February 28th at SUNY Oswego's campus. The St. Baldrick's head shaving will take place in the campus center at 7 p.m. The event will raise money for childhood cancer would, and would mean a lot to Emily and her family. Emily has raised about $1,000 in donation, but her goal is $1,500. If anyone likes to donate, they can go online to www.stbaldricks.org, call 888-899-BALD, or mail it to Emily at 112 Ellen Street, Oswego, New York, 13126. And now joining us is John Rain. John, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Okay, so you have a movie premiering out, and um, what is the movie about? Well, the movie's kind of like a, a paranormal activity, and we have a twist to it. The entities in the house actually take possession of the individual and uh, transforms them in, into kind of a killer. So it's, it's a thriller movie. Okay, and what inspired you to direct it and play the lead role in this film? Well, actually, what inspired me to direct it was we have another movie that we're coming out with that we're starting in March, and we have some dead time. So I actually hooked up with uh, one of your college students up there, a very talented young man by the name of uh, Eric Botanic, and uh, together we kind of came up with the idea for this movie. And I wasn't supposed to star in it. We had somebody else that was supposed to do it, and at the last minute uh, they backed out, so uh, I knew the script, so I went ahead and... Well, that's awesome. Um, when does it premiere so the public can see it? Uh, premieres uh, is coming March 5th and 6th at the Oswego Theater. And then uh, after that, it's going to be released to seven other theaters locally. So you have to watch the papers and the internet for it. Wow, that's very exciting. So we all can't wait to see it, and we're very excited about it. Well, I'm excited about it, too. And uh, we also, I'd like to mention, we have a pre-premiere party that's going on March 4th at the uh, Brighton, and uh, that's open to the public. So uh, we hope to see everybody out and uh, come down and, and see the show. Great. We're definitely going to support you on that one. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, John. Have a great night. Yeah, bye-bye. And now here's a look at your full forecast with Christina tomorrow, Tyrone. Once again, I am Christina Ferron, your WTOP 10 meteorologist. Happy Valentine's Day, and as I said while I was outside, it is very icy and slick. And is spring on its way? Well, let's see. Today we had a high temperature of 41 degrees, which has been pretty fairly warm compared to what we've seen. Um, we are well above average in both. Our sunrise tomorrow is at 7.05 a.m., and our sunset will be at 5.37. Local temperatures right now, 29 in Oswego, 28 in Hannibal, and as you move further inland, it is slightly cooler at 27 and 26, but fairly in the upper 20s across our local region. As we head to New York State weather, um, quite a few cold spots, Jamestown, Buffalo, 25 degrees, Watertown and Plattsburgh also at 25. So it is um, in the 20s, mainly across New York State. New York City, our warm spot as usual at 41 degrees. And here's our WeatherTap water vapor satellite. This is showing the moisture in the atmosphere that could be um, bringing, that will be heading our way, excuse me, uh, in the next couple of days, going to be bringing us that rain. Just um, 
light clouds as we see right now. Our New York State weather tab radar, this is the snow we saw er earlier today that has um, moved its way out. There could be a few lingering snow showers as we head into our um, morning tomorrow. And here's our future cast. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Doesn't really show anything on this future cast, but I think there could be a few lingering snow showers here and there. So just be prepared as you head out for your day. Uh, 1 p.m. around your lunch hour. It's going to be looking nice. Just a few clouds. The sun will actually be out, but it still will remain fairly cold, so you're going to need your winter jacket. And as we head to 7 p.m. tomorrow night, once again, no rain or precipitation in the forecast but there are going to be a few clouds here and there, still going to remain cold overnight. So for tonight, seven degrees, I said windy and cold. Uh, that, those winds are going to remain sustained between 20 and 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow, 19 degrees, lingering snow in the evening, sunny but cool. And tomorrow night, 14, partly cloudy. There could be a stray shower. Wednesday, 41, warm and breezy. And here's our extended forecast. Friday looks to be the warmest day. We could even reach 50 degrees, um, but it's going to be raining and the cold returns with more snow on Saturday. Thanks, Christina. Can't really complain oh. about that weather on Friday, but how about that rain? No good. I know. Rain, but out spring, I guess, is, you know, spring semester. We have to see spring sometime, you know. Yeah. It isn't the winter semester. So I guess it's, it'll be welcomed, I well, think. Well, apparently, I wasn't here this weekend, but there was a huge storm, right? Yeah, uh, we got tons of snow yet again. So a lot to shovel, but it wasn't as bad because it was lake effect, which isn't as heavy to shovel as synoptic snow. Absolutely. So, or a lot better. Well, when we come back, we'll have Nicole Garvis with your entertainment news. But first, with your late night menu. This log. Yeah! Whoa. Whoa! I like the brown wiggly one. Mmm, I like the green crunchy ones myself. Whoa. Go to discovertheforest.org. Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Hi, we're Real Big Fish. And you're watching WTOP10. Like the number. Cam's Pizzeria, located at 31 West Bridge Street, serving New York style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine in, take out, or order delivery by calling 315 342 4255. Hey guys, it's Q again here for the second season of our Swiggle soundtrack. Make sure you guys tune in with Eric and Connor. Jams out for you guys at 9.30 every Tuesday, all right? Make sure you're here Tuesday, 9.30. Don't be late. And now, here's Nicole Garvey with your entertainment news. What's going on, Nicole? Thanks, Alexandra. Good evening, Oswego. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Nicole Garvey, and here's your entertainment news. Another night of awards with the Grammys last night. Eminem brought home his 13th Grammy with his newest album, Recovery, as Best Rap Album of the Year. When Album of the Year was announced, fans were surprised to hear that Arcade Fire's album, The Suburbs, won. Lady Antebellum won Best Song with hit Need You Now. Even though Lady Gaga won Best Pop Vocal Album, people will definitely remember her at this award ceremony for her entrance. Gaga was carried onto the red carpet inside of an egg. Gaga hatched from her egg at the start of her performance of her new song, Born This Way. Most were expecting Justin Bieber or Drake to take home Best New Artist of the Year, but a surprising win went to Esperanza Spalding. Her new track, Little Fly, is what got her on the charts. CeeLo and Gwyneth Paltrow performed his Grammy-winning Forget You. He was dressed in feathers with puppets as his backup dancer singing around the stage. 
Charlie Sheen is slowly making a recovery and trying to get a handle on things again. He says he's ready to be back on the CBS hit Two and a Half Men, but producers want to give him a little more time off. Sheen is scheduled to be back on the show in August 2014. While getting clean, Sheen found out that his porn star party pal is pregnant. In the spirit of Valentine's Day, divorcing couple Peter Wentz and Ashley Simpson decided to put aside their differences and hang out. Lindsay Lohan will be spending her Valentine's Day with her special friend, Samantha Ronson. That's all for entertainment. I'm Nicole Garvey, and have a happy Valentine's Day. Well, how about Lady Gaga? She never seems to disappoint. Never disappointment. <laughs> you should have mentioned uh, Nicki Minaj's outfit. Oh, that, that outfit was crazy. The leopard print was, crazy, was yeah. a hit. I loved her hair, though. Oh, yeah. She was great. But what's up with Justin Bieber? No awards? What's with that? No love. That was very disappointing. I do like Justin Bieber a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, okay. what's going on now? In state politics. Today in Albany, Senate Democrats held a press conference to publicly address their unhappiness with Republicans' sluggish effort to meet them halfway in the reform of partisan districting. Senate Democrats have made proposals for a half dozen committee reforms in hopes it will lead to a more bipartisan Senate. The proposal culminated in the creation of a unitary governmental ethics commission to act as a Senate watchdog. Senate Republicans are currently hesitant to sign on to all the proposed plans of the Democrats but the Democrats are currently behind doors discussing the reform. Iowa's governor wants to help more families get their youngsters in preschool. Governor Terry Branstad rolled out his new preschool plan Monday that would have the state pick up $3,000 of the cost. The state preschool scholarships would be available on a sliding scale based on income. High income families would pick up their entire tab. The governor says providing an Iowa school with children that opportunities attending preschool will reduce the need for special education services and for children to repeat grades. Opponents of this plan fear it will reduce the access and quality of preschool to middle class families. And now for a full look at sports with Taylor Puglis. Thank you, Augs Thank you, Alexandra. Today in sports, Tiger Woods' return to U.S. leaves him not only searching for his first win since 2009, but also with less money in his pocket. The European Tour fined Woods an undisclosed amount for spitting on the 12th green during the final round of the Dubai Desert Classic. The incident came after Woods missed a par putt on his way to a 3-over 75 and out of contention at the tournament. When he found out about the fine, Woods tweeted, quote, The Euro Tour is right. It was inconsiderate of me to spit like that, and I know better. End quote. In the National Hockey League, the Toronto Maple Leafs have traded forward Christopher Stieg to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for a first and third round pick in the 2011 NHL Draft. The 24-year-old Versteeg has 14 goals and 21 assists in 53 games this season. The trade is the second made by the Leafs in less than a week as they traded defenseman Francois Boucherman to Anaheim for forward Joffrey Lupel last Wednesday. The deal is coming in advance of the trade deadline, which comes up on February 28th at 3 p.m. Finally, following the Oswego women's hockey team's shocking 2-1 victory over the number one ranked and undefeated RIT Tigers Saturday night, the ECAC West has honored two of the Lakers. Goaltender Emmy Williams and forward Olivia Borson were named the conference's goaltender and rookie of the week, respectively. Williams made 80 saves as the Lakers split with the Tigers, including 46 in Saturday's win. Borson had a goal and two assists in the weekend series, including the game-winning goal in Saturday's up night's upset. That's it for sports. Now back to over to the desk. And when we come back, we'll find out what lucky couple got to get married on top of the Empire State Building. Stay tuned. We'll be back. You're watching WTOP. I know. Located at 31 West Bridge Street, serving New York style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine in, take out, or order delivery by calling 315 342 4255.
Join the Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. There's a place not so far away, a place where you don't have to keep the volume down. You'll find all sorts of creatures in this place without have to. The silly you, the proud you. You may even meet the curious it's you. Tickling me. You! 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 Ask your parents to take you to this not so far away place. Come to the forest, where the other you lives. But first, stop by discovertheforest.org. Got a good thing Hi, we're Real Big Fish. And you're watching WTOP10. Like the number. And there's a dive into the lighter side of news. What's more romantic than a Valentine's Day wedding? How about a Valentine's Day wedding at the Empire State Building? 14 couples were selected in a nationwide contest. Today's the only day that allows married couples to get married at the Landmark Building, and there have been Valentine's Day weddings there for the past 17 years. Every broadcaster's worst nightmare is to mess up while reading their story. For Serene Branson, this came true. According to Salon.com, while Branson was recapping last night's Grammys, she ended up slurring her words on air. A uh, heavy divertation tonight. We had a very Darrison bite. Let's go hit Terrace Chase in those. Immediately after the camera stopped rolling, rumors spread that she was rushed to the hospital where she claimed she had a stroke. CBS's update states she was not hospitalized, but paramedics did examine her and her vital signs were normal. One doctor did check her. Say, saying she might have suffered a mini stroke. Branson says she's feeling better and will visit the doctor for some follow up medical tests. And now let's take a look at your class day forecast. Christine? Well, as you wake up in the morning, the temperature, as I said, is going to be very cold in the single digits, um, colder with the wind chill, so probably below zero. So I want to make sure you bundle up as you head out. Could be a few snow showers. Um, but the sun is going to come out tomorrow, which we rarely see here in Oswego during the winter. Uh, the temperature will only go up to about 19 degrees. But as the rest of the week continues to progress, it is going to get warmer, which is very exciting. So, Just another day in Oswego, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, all right, well, I mean... How was your Valentine's Day, Alexander? <laughs> it was great. I got chocolate covered strawberries. Oh, everyone's favorite, right? It's my favorite. What did you do, Steve? Oh, uh, you know, about to go out tonight, paint the town red with all the ladies all over town. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> you know. Sorry. But uh, to my mother and my grandmother, happy Valentine's Day, the ladies of my lives. <laughs> to all of our mothers and grandmothers. <laughs> to all of our mothers and grandmothers. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for tonight. That's all for us here at WOTOP. I'm Steve Fry. I'm Alexandra Levy. I'm Taylor Pugliese. And I'm Christina Ferrone. Have a good night and happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day.